Hello everybody, welcome to Fruitful Trees. And today I got a video for you of something that's been on my mind a lot and something I wanted to talk to you about. When I planted my yard here of all these different trees, I did my best to get what was gonna give me the most food. And that's always my goal as a raw food vegan that eats mostly fruits and vegetables as a majority of his food is to eat and grow the things that are gonna give me the most food. And the number one food that I buy in the store uh, besides all these amazing exotic fruits and everything else is avocados and there's so many different varieties of avocados out there and at one time i owned 17 or 18 avocado trees now i didn't have the ability to get all of those in the ground because i wanted a good variety of other foods and to rotate my foods so i did the best to put the ones in the ground that i knew that i was familiar with and knew that would do great but as i continued my journey into growing fruit trees and learning about the different things. Just when you think you know it all, something else happens and you learn more. And that's what happened with me with avocados. So I'm very pleased with the avocados that I do have in the ground, uh, but I don't have space for everything. And I wanna make sure I cover all the seasons of avocado. There are primarily four seasons for avocado. And if you cover all four of them, you can give yourself avocados for at least nine months out of the year growing on your own trees. But I don't just want to have one variety growing during a season in case it's an off season or if it's a, a off year and that tree didn't do well. So I want to have at least two per season. That was my goal. And when I looked at my chart and the avocados I did have in the ground, apparently for the winter season, which is where we are now, I have four varieties. And for the mid season, I only had one variety. So I had to take one late variety out and put one mid-season variety in. So that's where I was. And when I evaluated everything I have, what it came down to was, and let me just give you an example of what I have in the ground first, okay? So I have here, let me turn this around. So here's an example of the different trees I have. I have this Catalina, and this Catalina is a mid-season variety, actually my only mid-season variety. So I gotta do something with that. And then here I have, this one, which was a, kind of a mixed tree because it was a winter Mexican, but I kind of changed it up and put some other things on here. So we'll see how that goes. I'm not even counting that until I see how it goes. Uh, I have a Simmons. I have a, a, a Dupuy in the ground. I also have some that are in the ground. I have a Chiquette in the ground. I have an Oro Negro. But here's my dilemma today. Here it is. I have this Miguel in a pot. And Miguel is something that I actually had in my other yard that I took out of the ground because it wasn't getting water and wasn't looking too great. So I repotted it to get it back in the ground. But here is my, my Monroe. Now I've heard great things about Monroe. I've tasted it several times. Sometimes I tasted it, it was delicious. Sometimes I tasted it, it was quite watery. However, this is my big, one of my best trees that I have that's not fruiting yet. This Monroe avocado tree. However, when I evaluated my winter trees and my winter season for avocados, so as I was saying, when I evaluated my winter trees, this Monroe was a problem because I already had an Oro Negro, a Choquet, and, and a Superhoss in the ground. Those three trees already cover the same season as this Monroe, and I only have one mid-season avocado, over there, which was the Catalina, which I just showed you. So obviously there's an issue because if I have a mid-season, off-season with that Catalina, I got nothing in the mid-season, but I already got four things in the late season. So that's not good. Now for my early season, I have a Simmons avocado and a Dupuis in the ground. And those are early season avocados. But my late season, I do not need four avocados in the ground. I don't have room for new trees. So something had to change. I needed a mid-season or an early winter season avocado instead of these late ones. So there's several different things I could have did. The first one is uh, this Monroe tree I can take out and repot and either sell or hold for the future. Now what I love about the Monroe is it's, uh, Monroe is it's very consistent. So I'm still a little hesitant to take it out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I'm going to taste two Monroe avocados, one from two different farms. If 
Neither one of them knocks my socks off, even though I don't wear socks because I have sandals on in Florida. But unless they're amazing, which I don't remember them being amazing in their taste. I remember them being good. I'm going to get rid of it. If they're amazing, maybe I'll keep it just so I have extra insurance for the late season. Uh, but Monroe's probably going to go. And what am I going to put here? Well, here it is. One of my favorite late early winter or late season, mid season avocados is, is, and there's a kitty here, is say hello. Say hello, kitty. Okay. Is, let's see, coming back here, is this. It's a Miguel. My neighbor has a Miguel. It's his favorite tree and it does wonderful. It tastes good and it fruits well. It's very consistent. So I am thinking if this Monroe doesn't taste that I'm going to taste uh, now, if it doesn't taste absolutely amazing, I'm going to take this Monroe out. I know I said I'm not going to take trees out, but when you have a small space, you don't have a choice sometimes. I'm going to take this Monroe out and I'm going to put this Miguel right here. So that's one option. Now, another option is if the Miguel does taste great and I want to keep it, then I got to remove something else. And if I just come back over here, I have several trees in the ground. This I have a jujube in the ground, which it would be an okay spot, but that, that could be one option because those, those do well in a pot, I find. But this here, I have a lot of jackfruit, a lot of jackfruit. I don't want to get rid of this jackfruit. This is a crunchy lemon jackfruit. Now, I had a Bangkok lemon. Uh, I, I don't have crunchy lemon. I thought it was the same thing, but I come to find out it's not exactly the same thing. But this would be a really nice spot for the Miguel if I decide to keep them in row. But I'm undecided on that because I really don't want to get rid of this. But we'll see what I decide with the Monroe. Uh, and then over here, I have grown really nice here. That's another early season. That's a Dupuy. It's small, but it's really nice. So the Miguel's going in the ground one way or the other. And it's going to happen any day now. Is it going to go where the Monroe is? Am I taking Monroe out? Most likely. Now, I still have some avocados in a pot. But when I was researching the Miguel, there was one other mid-season avocado that I heard was amazing. And I actually had the tree in the ground and it actually died. And I still have that spot available for it. But I'm hesitant to put that same tree in the spot. I ran out and I got another one because... Everyone told me, as great as the Miguel is for a mid-season avocado, this one's better. So I ended up getting it again. And it's one avocado I didn't taste yet, but I got it in the ground because everyone raves about it. And that is a day avocado. So a day avocado is supposed to be a good mid-season avocado. So what I did to find a spot here is... I, 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 I recently took out... Uh, a, a banana tree, and also I took out uh, a, a raw sapote tree. And I know I just made a video about raw sapote, and uh, I'll, I'll make another video about why I decided to take that one out. And I put a day avocado in, so check it out. Okay, so where the cat is there, this is a <laughs> the cat likes the spot. Uh, this is the spot I created for the day avocado. So day avocado is a mid-season avocado. I don't need the Monroe. If I have the day, I had created a lot of room here. There's my orange sherbet tree, and I, I moved this over. And where the cat is there, I have, I have a day avocado. It's not a big tree. It tastes amazing. So I can leave that there. So now I got a day avocado. So now I'm in a situation where I'm going from one mid-season avocado, Catalina, to three. So I got my day avocado in. Now I still have... Some avocados that I have not yet uh, put in that we'll see if I get more space or something happens. I don't want to overdo avocados because now in the winter, when all my trees are blooming, I got Supahas, I got Choquet, and I have Oro Negro. I have too many avocados, believe it or not, more than I can eat. But I have here some avocados. I have my Maria Black, which I still have to get in the ground. Uh, that's a... Uh, mid to late season one so that would be good for this season as well i have this kampong which is a delicious late season variety that i absolutely love and then i have my improved pollock 
that I still got to get in the ground. And on top of that, I have a seedless avocado that I don't know the season to that I got to get in the ground as well. So I have some decisions to make. I'm leaning towards getting rid of the Monroe and putting in the Miguel over there. And the other one's just leaving them in a pot for now. Uh, but this uh, improved pot, I mean, this uh, Kampong has to get in the ground soon because it's really big. But I want to show you the Monroe and what's going on this year with Monroe right now. It's very interesting. So let me show you that now. Okay, another reason why I'm thinking of getting rid of the Monroe avocado is uh, my friend has a farm, an avocado farm in the homestead, uh, Guac Farm or Sleepy Lizard Avocado Farm, and he sells Monroe avocados. So I can always get Monroe avocados to my front door at any time with just one a phone call or message. I can get a box of avocados at my front door, at Monroe avocados if I want them. And I already have a Chiquette avocado as for my uh, season as well now. And the Chiquette is, uh, is very similar to Monroe. So I don't think I'll need it. But if I do need it, I call him up and he sends it out. And now here's a list of, uh, of, of what he sends in the package. And he has Chiquette. He has Simmons. He has a, a, a an, and Monroe. And a bunch of other ones that he has on his site. That's amazing. So you want to go check that out at guacfarm.com. Guacfarm.com. That's a G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M.com. But this is a Monroe avocado that he sent me from his tree. And this is a big, giant avocado. And once it gets ripe, I'm going to taste it. Now, the interesting thing about Monroe this year is my neighbor has a tree. And also another friend of mine who has a farm has a tree. And... They only came out this small this year. So I don't have I don't have a, a way to hold this and that, but let me show you the difference here of Guac Farms Monroe Avocado versus everyone else's Monroe Avocado this year. And these are both Monroe. Look at that. That's from Guac Farm. Sleepy Lizard Avocado Farm, guacfarm.com. And that is a farm, either my neighbor's tree or another local farm. They're about the same size Monroe this year. So let's see if it makes a difference in taste. When these get ripe, I'm going to taste them, and I'm going to see if there's a difference. There's absolutely a difference in the quality of the fruit and size. But let's see in taste. As I'm going to taste both of these and maybe a few more before I take out my Monroe tree just to see how they are. So as you can see, just when I think that everything's great with the trees I got and everything else, I'm always thinking. I'm, I'm always thinking when I'm out there. I'm always deciding what I'm going to move or what, what I have to move. And I'm thinking ahead. I want to make sure I'm covered in the avocado season. And I, I'm already covered uh, in my early season when the avocados come in with my Simmons and my Dupuy, they're both early season avocados, excellent varieties. My mid season, I got my Catalina. Now I'll have my Day and my uh, and my uh, Miguel. And then for my late season, I have a Chiquette. I have an Oro Negro. I have a Superhas and maybe a Monroe. So that's what's in the ground. Now for late season, I still have two of my favorite avocados, Maria Black and Improved Pollock, that are not in the ground yet that uh, I, I will make space for both of them when they get a little bit bigger because they're smaller trees. Uh, and then I have the Kampong, which I absolutely love as well. And that is my avocado story here. Uh, I do have a, a dwarf avocado and an un, uh, unknown avocado in another yard. It's actually known. I don't know if it's a Lula or Monroe. It might be a Monroe, but I moved the tree from somewhere else. So that's another thing to consider. If it's Lula, that's fine. I don't have a Lula, but if it's a Monroe, that's, I don't want two Monroes, but I won't know that until that tree uh, starts to produce again. Anyway, let me know what avocado trees you have and you've tasted and you like and you don't like, but that's my story here. Uh, I'm going to now taste, uh, well, both of these get ripe. I'm going to taste them both on the camera here, the Monroe, and then make my decision based on the taste of that. I don't want anything less than superb. And I know that the, from what, well, at least from what I hear, the day avocado is, is superior to 
many of the avocados out there. So I'm looking forward to that. I know Simmings is superb. I've had that. The Super House is superb. Monroe, I really like. I'm going to have to compare that against the day. Catalina is superb. Oro Negro is my favorite. Choquet is so-so. It's very consistent. It's a good barra. Uh, a little less than than outstanding, but but definitely great quality. Uh, but the Maria Black and the Improved Pollock and the Kampong that I have that aren't in the ground. Oh, and I also have a Tyler, which I tasted recently. Another amazing avocado, but it's late season. So I, I don't want to have just a bunch of late season avocados and nothing else. So that's why I'm uh, considering, highly considering taking one out and replacing it. All right, everybody. So I'm going to come back here with a taste of both these Monroe and make my decision. Okay, everybody. Today is the day I make my decision. This is my Monroe avocado that I got from Sleepy Lizard Avocado Farm. And here's a shirt that they sent me as well. You can get these Monroe avocados in the mail right now, depending when you're watching this. But if you're watching this when it first posted, they're in season right now. And I'm deciding if I'm going to keep my Moreau avocado tree because it's the same season as three other trees, uh, avocados that I have. And the downside is I don't need four avocados in the same season. The upside is the Chilquet and the Oro Negro that I have right now are known to possibly be alternate bearers. And I don't want to be stuck with no avocados. And then the third one I have is a Super Haas. And this year it's doing great, but that's known to ripen uneven. This year it's been fine. So there's a possible upside of keeping the Monroe. But again, I need another mid-year uh, avocado or mid-season avocado. Uh, I just uh, have that day that I showed you. And I also have my Catalina. But I really want to get a Miguel. So I was thinking of taking out the Monroe and putting Miguel in, but the Miguel, Monroe, Monroe tree is looking great. So this is going to determine what happens. I'm not wearing socks, so it can't knock my socks off because I wear sandals. But if this knocks my socks off, I can't get rid of a good tree, <laughs> even though I should. So I'm going to taste this now. And I've had Monroe before. I've had several Monroes. To me, they taste like a choquet. Uh, some I had were great and some I had were so-so. Now, Tom at Sleepy Lizard Avocado Farm says that the issue is if you pick them too early or early in season, not just too early, but early in season, they're not as good as later in season. Now they're supposed to be perfect. So here it is. We're going to try it right now and see what's going to happen. Wow, Monroe avocado. How many of you have tasted a Monroe? It's really nice. It tastes like a chuque. That's really nice. Now, I would like to get the Miguel in. I don't have much of a space. The Miguel's getting big. If I don't get in the ground, I'm going to have to up pot it. But I have to say, I'm really impressed with this Monroe. Now, Something I have to consider is this is from Sleepy Lizard Avocado Farm. If I get rid of my Monroe, I can always get them from there. They have a ton of Monroe trees. Also, another farm gave me a Monroe this size. Look at the difference. So something they're doing at Sleepy Lizard Avocado Farm is getting the Monroes to be how they're supposed to be, possibly. And am I going to be able to do that as well? And I have a decision to make. It's really, really nice. And again, I've had some that weren't as nice, but 
They were early in the season. Also, the Juque tree I have doesn't have a big space to grow. So I'm not going to get the amount of avocados as I, I would like to off of it. I'll get a few maybe. It's going to grow high and skinny considering the spot it's in. This avocado has a lot more room. I don't want to be with avocados. <laughs> so I'm going to keep the Monroe tree. And as it gets big, I'll graft Miguel onto it. That's my decision that I just came up with. I'll graft Miguel onto it. Unless I find a spot for another tree, which I don't really have. But the raw avocado is a winner. It's not uh, the best avocado I've ever tasted. But it's one of the best producing ones. That's why I put it in. And uh, my mate, my neighbor that does have one, he's very impressed with with it. And I've had them. It's impressive. If you want to taste them in raw avocados uh, and other avocados, choquette and whatever else in season, go to guacfarm.com. And they ship boxes of avocados in the mail to you uh, for almost the same prices as you can buy them in the store, but you're not going to get them this great quality. So I'll put that link below the video. And uh, put your comments and questions below. I'm really excited about the day that I got in the ground, the day avocado. And we'll see what happens with the rest. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you for watching and keep growing.